Okay. Oh, okay, Jennifer, try again because people are on. I might have had the wrong thing open. Hello everyone. I'm just, we're uh, learning, we're getting a few glitches out and I'm promoting um, those of you that are board members to panelists right now if you're not quite there yet. That's what I'm doing. I'm kind of maybe indicating to them at different points where they would be stepping in, but um, it's a little unusual again because we don't have a chair yet. So staff's going to be doing some of the stuff that um, the chair normally does. But um, I wanted to welcome all of you. Sorry about um, the technological challenges here. It looked like Jan and I were in our own meeting, having our own meeting, and you guys had it all figured out and you were in your own meeting. So it took us a little bit to get <laughs> to the right place. Uh, so thanks everybody and um, for your continued patience uh, while we work through this tonight. Um, and then I want to just kind of welcome you again. I know we've had a couple onboarding sessions already, but um, again, um, really appreciate everybody taking the time out of their busy schedules and especially uh, during these very challenging times to participate in this and to thank you again for your patience. I know um, the commission was officially set up back in January, and so um, to have our first meeting in November is not quite where we wanted to be, but um, there were just a lot of challenges kind of in between there and on the, on the path to getting here. So thank you again for your patience while we got this set up. So we're really excited to get this going, and we have a very, very full uh, work plan uh, for next year and well into 2022 and 2023. Um, so there's just going to be a lot of work. Uh, with the commission. So I know in the the, um, the ordinance, we said we have to meet at least on a quarterly basis. We'll definitely be meeting on a monthly basis. So just start to think ahead about that, um, you know, as we outlined on the work plan, but um, definitely just a lot of work uh, for the group to be reviewing and to be participating in over the next couple of years. So um, the next thing that we had that we were going to do is read, there's um, usually like a meeting preamble um, that we would read that other um, commissions and committees do and Jan was going to read that and I don't know if she can hear me yet but I don't think she can so I will go ahead and do that let me just find it in my folders here It is. I just have to comment on David's backdrop. It looks like your hair is just flying away. It's perfectly <laughs> framed on your camera. Oh yeah, that is. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Nice hair. <laughs> um, let's see. It does look a little bit like watching the NASA um, event the other day with the uh, <laughs> astronaut going into the hair flying. Oh, and I did want to I did want to remind everybody uh, for those of you that are on the commission, if you um, 
could keep your cameras on during the meeting, um, we would appreciate that because that we need to make sure that you're there and you're actually participating in the meeting. So that counts towards participation. So if you could just keep, I know um, uh, some of us don't like to be on camera, um, but uh, yeah, if you could just keep your camera on, that would uh, be really helpful for us. So I'm just gonna meet this, uh, read this preamble. This is really more for the community uh, more so than the Commission itself, but I think it'll just be helpful. So the role of the Transportation and Mobility Commission is to review and analyze transportation projects, policy changes, program development, and other transportation matters affecting the public right-of-way. We follow a uh, public process including voting on action items during which the public has an opportunity to provide additional perspectives and information. In legislative matters, the role of the Commission is advisory. The Transportation and Mobility Commission may hold separate meetings to consider recommendations and provide their own. And City Council may also hold separate meetings to consider the recommendation from the Commission and make the final determination. The Transportation and Mobility Commission will conduct a public meeting tonight and take public comments regarding the matters being considered. Any written testimony received by 4 p.m. will be read into the record by staff. Callers who have pre-registered by 4 p.m. on the Transportation and Mobility Commission survey page will be called upon to address the commission later on at the appropriate time on the agenda. When you are called, uh, we will, um, for, this is for the citizens. When you are called, um, we'll promote you to a panelist member so members can see and hear you as you provide your comments. If you're providing the formal recommendation of a neighborhood association or other group, please tell us when the association voted on the matter as well as how many people were for or against the item that you brought forward. Please keep your remarks brief and to the point. When um, commenting to the commission, remarks should be, directed, should be directed to the commission as a body, not the audience or staff. Please do not repeat comments that have already been provided in print or verbally. Please show respect for people commenting tonight whether or not you agree with their comments. And that one's, um, um, Maybe not necessarily so much for the, uh, the online version, but that's the in-person version. And another thing to mention is we do have the ability to use the chat box. So um, that though is not intended for any kind of public comment, any kind of discussion between members of the commission. It's only really for kind of technical issues. So if you um, are you know, having trouble connecting or you're having trouble finding something, um, just let us know, but really try to keep the chat box uh, focused on technical related issues or admin related issues and don't have any kind of public comment or discussion in the chat box. Um, so again, that preamble, for those of you that might be thinking about uh, being chair of the commission, uh, the preamble is normally uh, read by the, the chair of the commission. It's just a formality for the meeting process. Um, so the next thing uh, that we were going to do is um, Excuse just me, Jennifer, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So what's going on is I'm listening through my phone so I can okay. hear you. I can okay. hear the meeting now. Um, I'll have to turn down my phone if I'm going to talk, but I at least can hear what's going on. I'll try to help out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So do you want me to, is it easier for me to just kind of take these um, introduction components? I already read the preamble, so I, I went through that already. I'm sorry, say that again. I, I read through the preamble already, so if it's hard for you to switch back between your phone and the Zoom, then I can just continue going through the agenda if that's okay. Please do. Okay, All right. Um, so the next thing that we needed to do was um, take a roll call uh, for commission members. And so I will call on you each individually. And then if you could just say that you're here, um, we see that you're here and then just um, introduce yourself. Um, you don't have to say anything or share anything, but if you could just introduce yourself and if you have like a nickname or a, a preference for how um, uh, we may uh, refer to you just let us know. So I'll just start at the top. So Leah, you're first. And I probably don't have a way. Can you unmute? Okay. I just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
So you want me to say here, I'm Leah. Yep. I'm, yep. I'm Leah. Other than <laughs> other than her royal highness, I guess. <laughs> Just Leah. Okay. And Ken, you want to go next? Um, Ken Williams here. And in case you're wondering, all that stuff behind me is my wife's origami paper stash. Well, one of the stashes. Oh, is that what she does? Like, I've seen her at other meetings working with paper. So is that what she's working on, is origami? Oh, shameless plug, go down to Boomerang, uh, <laughs> little, the old Boomerang shop, and look at the installation there. And go over to the former Angst Gallery, look there. Go to the VDA office on Main Street. A uh, new one just went in just uh, this morning. Oh, so okay. There you are. And the Angst window will be updated on Thursday. Great. Okay. I've always wondered what she was doing. So that's amazing. Thank you. Great. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle McKenzie and I just go by Michelle. Okay. Mike? Uh, my name is Mike Payne and I am present and accounted for. Thank you. Anna? Here, Anna Dearman. I'm a staff. Yeah. <laughs> David. Yeah, hi, this is uh, David Galajan. Again, I'm the assistant city attorney and going to be advising you as we go through this meeting and all our meetings to come. Um, let's see. Eduardo. Yeah, Eduardo Ramos here. Hello, Thank everyone. <laughs> Matt? Uh, Matt Herman, I'm present. <laughs> Carson? Hi, I'm Carson, I'm here. Thank you. Loretta? Loretta Callahan at City of Vancouver Public Works, and I'm present. <laughs> and then we've got Jan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and um, okay, so that was it for roll call. Thank you again for doing that. Um, Do we have to call the people that aren't there just or note that they're not there? Yeah, so that's the next thing that I had. Um, so there is a process for um, if you, if the commission wants to excuse uh, members that are absent. So um, let me pull up our list here. So I know that, um, let's see, Mario, um, Mario, I, I'm sorry, Raya, I think is his last name, isn't present. And um, Charles Chuck Freyer isn't present right now. Um, and then we've got Diria Ruggles, who isn't present, and then Teresa Hardy. So um, we just have to go through a process. And again, this is just something that I can help lead, but normally it would be the chair leading it. But a member of the commission has to make a motion to excuse. Looks those. like they're trying to log in. Oh, are they? Okay. Or at least there he is. Okay. There he is. Oh, they were at the wrong meeting too. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me, um, let me send out this information to the group again. I'm just gonna send this out to everybody again real quick. Is there anything I can help with, Jennifer? Thank you. I've got um, I've got it all set here to go. Um, and Jennifer, this is this is David again. Well, once we figure out who is here and who is not, uh, if you could make sure that we've got um, a, a number count of oh, okay. how many people are here and then how many people we end up not having today. But okay, Jennifer, I just added. Um, 
someone to, I, I just added someone to a panelist. Okay. Let's see. Um, what, Dara Ruggles, should I add her to as panelist? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, we should be good now. Uh, as we're trying to figure out these uh, technical uh, issues, Jan, if you are able to toggle uh, your sound on the phone, uh, maybe you should try speaking through your phone mic uh, rather than on the computer. Or do you not have that ability on your phone? No. I don't have the ability because I'm an attendee and I cannot promote myself to a panelist. That's actually what I was trying to do and I can't. So, um, well, the good thing is you're no longer echoing. Well, actually, let me try something here. Sorry, Jennifer. Sorry. So we've got one more member that's joined. Um, and I want to make sure it's, it's Diria, right? I'm, I'm here. I'm trying to eat. I'm trying to message Teresa on the old, on the wrong um, meeting to tell her to read her email so she can get on here. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm sorry about the difficulties. I don't know how we got to set up. I was going to ask that. Is it best that we just go to the calendar that we're all sharing and try and log in from there? Do you think that's the most accurate? It appears the link that's on the meeting agenda. Is that how most of you got in was using the link on the meeting agenda? That's how I did it at first, but then I went to, because I didn't see anyone and it said you were in a different meeting, I decided to go to my calendar and double click on the meeting on the calendar and it opened it up huh. to where you all were. Yeah, so I had to do the opposite. The one that I had on my calendar didn't work, and then the one that was in the agenda worked. <laughs> I use your uh, the, the uh, address that you provided by email. Email, okay. Man, okay, we'll get this figured out. I used the email and it didn't work. It put me in that meeting with these two other nice people, somebody named Bill and Jamal, and and then um, Bill actually got out and said it's it, that it's. Because if you look at the at the one, the Transportation and Mobility Commission, and it says meeting access information, and there's a there's an access to online meeting, so that's the one I clicked on, and that's the one that takes me to the one where those other people are, and you weren't. So, oh, okay. and I just told Teresa that it's actually in the agenda, so hopefully she, um, and then I told her to read her email that you were sending it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's weird. Some people use the calendar and some people use the agenda. Okay. Well, thank you again for your patience. We'll get this figured out. We actually did do a test run yesterday and it went totally fine, of course. <laughs> so we did try it out just to make sure. Uh, clearly, uh, we have something to work on here. So, um, okay, let me... So I guess we'll keep going and assume that Teresa can show up. So that puts us at one. So Jennifer, in that email, did you send the actual Zoom link for her? I just put it, I just gave her the one in the agenda, but um, maybe I should just reforward the meeting request. Well, the, anything that she can just click directly on, because I think she's, she's feeling pretty confused. She tried to leave and came back in. And so just, you know, if the actual link would be so helpful, I think. Okay. <clears throat> do you think you could do that for me, Anna? Absolutely, I'll send it to her. Okay, and then I also got an email from Bill Bauman who can't get in either, so I'll forward this to you. 
Okay. Yeah, I can send the link Jennifer, to Jennifer, I just admitted Bill. I, I just admitted Bill. Okay, you've got Bill in? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is there okay. something we can do to tell the other members of the public that I don't I don't know how who who was on waiting in the other meeting? I think it was just Bill that was in the other meeting with them. No, it's she said it was me and a man named Jamal Anthony. Yes. And he looked oh, like sorry. He was so there is a there is a member of the public on right now. He's watching, and he's here. Yeah, Jamal is in. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm just a member of the public. I'm just watching, just taking notes. I was also in the other link that had been emailed to me, but I, I'm just, I was just a resident, just taking notes. Okay. Hey, Jamal, I'm going to switch you back to attendee for now. Sounds okay. Good. Thank you so much. This is Bill. You should probably switch me to attendee as well. Oh. Okay, so right now we're missing Chuck Freyer, Mario, and then hopefully Teresa can get on. So that's three members that we have missing right now. I see meeting. Teresa as an attendee over here too. I was just noticing. Okay, so maybe she made it in. So David, do we have to name the the individuals that are absent when we go through the process of excusing them, or can we just say for those members that are absent, they're excused? My my suggestion would be once we clarify everything, we determine who is here and who is not. We just okay. run through, and you can just say really quickly the name, first name and last name of everyone who's here and first name and last name of everyone who is absent. Okay. And, um, you know, unless they've submitted some kind of request for an unexcused absence, we can just put that aside for right now for this meeting. Okay. Well, maybe I'll wait to do this until um, we can hopefully get everybody in the meeting. So, yeah, so certainly, certainly give it a couple, you know, a couple of minutes and then once, everyone is here who at least has been trying to get in, um, then we can go forward from there. So can we let Teresa, since she's listed as an attendee, can she be moved to a panelist or? Yeah, Jan should be able to move her up. Are you able to move her up, Jan? Yeah. If, she's am up. I in on the meeting now from your end? Yes, you are. Oh, all right. I'm sorry about- Hey, Teresa, you made it. I know, I made it. <laughs> Did Bill and Jamal make it? Are they on? Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Sorry, well, Teresa. Teresa, if you can have your, your camera on. Okay. Okay, so um, Anna just sent out the corrected Zoom link to the other members um, in case um, to Chuck and Mario. Okay. So uh, Teresa, how did you end up getting in? Was it the link that Anna sent or did you have to use another roundabout way to get in? Well, I Bill actually sent me a link that he tried to help me with, and then he tried to help me um, copy and paste, but I couldn't do that because I don't have the computer skills, and he has a PC and I have a Mac, and then I went back in, I went just went out of everything, and I went back in to the latest email from you, and I went into the agenda, Yeah. and I clicked on the link in the agenda, okay. <laughs> but I had to do that about four or five times because at first it wouldn't let me in. It kept asking, it kept saying I was entering a passwording where you enter your name. 
Um, so I got, so I just kept trying and trying and trying and then it just happened. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, we, we were discussing that some people were able to get in with the link on the agenda. Others were able to get in with the link and the meeting notification. So apologies again, we'll try to get this figured out and make sure it doesn't happen for the next. Yeah. Meeting. I tried going in, I left Daria and I tried to go back in through the link through that meeting notification, but I couldn't get in that way either. Okay. All right. Um, I don't know, maybe Anna, do you think you could go to the, the web page and post both? Um, I, I mean, I think the one from the agenda is up on the web page, uh, but maybe make sure if we have two different ones that we somehow have, if you could just check and post both of them, since one or the other seems to be working for different people. Sure. Okay. So then we can make sure if somebody from the public is trying to get in, they can use that as a resource. Thank you. Um, okay, so we'll just wait to do the um, excusal process until we get a little bit farther in the meeting. Can I just ask a quick question? If, yeah. if, if we were to have a problem at the next meeting getting in, what is the best thing for us to do? Should we email you, Jennifer, immediately? Yeah. Should yeah. we email you? Okay. Yeah. So the, um, the first thing that we had on the agenda was the bylaws for tonight. Um, so I, I know that you've all been able to see and go through the bylaws and we, we discussed them at the onboarding session last week. So um, that's something that we can vote on and that we're supposed to pass tonight um, with our first meeting for the ordinance that we structured for the commission. So I didn't know if anybody, and David's gonna lead this discussion with you, he can provide kind of an overview of the bylaws again, like we did last week. Um, and then we can talk about whether there's any um, changes you would like to see done. But again, um, David and I are kind of filling the role of the chair. The chair would normally be kind of handling this process and kind of facilitating the, the communication with the commission members. So I'll let you take it from here, David. Thank you. So, you know, as, as we talked about last time, the bylaws are just a way for everyone to understand the process by which you're going to be going about your business. And so a, a lot of it is really procedural in terms of what you do and how you do it. Uh, some of it is in terms of the notification processes that need to take place pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. And, um, you know, really the, the important things to, to remember, it's that um, these can be amended if it turns out for whatever reason that we need to add or subtract something that, that turns out not to be working for this commission as, as a practical matter as we move forward. Because right now, what we've done is largely take, start from a, a starting point of like the planning commission's bylaws and which is a similar you know volunteer uh, member commission and use that as a template but because you are different you are an advisory board um, you don't do some of the functions especially the quasi judicial functions that the planning commission takes on you know if we do need to amend them that can take place uh, but we kind of ran through it and um, if anybody has more questions about uh, the a specific provision of the bylaws that we didn't get to last time or, or you've thought of since the last meeting. Uh, I would take those at that at this time. I do, David. I do, David. Thank you. Can Go you ahead, hear Teresa. me? Yes. Okay. Well, you know, I think it was Matt, but I can't remember for sure, brought up the one about the um, term, terms of offices. And that was a question that I had on my first read through the bylaws. And then I just reread the one that was sent to us. And I can see that those terms looks like have been taken off that section, that section three terms of officers. So I'm assuming that in, in the new bylaws that we're gonna adopt, we're not gonna have those links 
of how long someone's going to be a commissioner for. Is that right? Yeah. So what we did is we took out the the ordinance that establishes the commission. You know, has has a staggered starting point so that everybody gets appointed at the same time, but you know the first terms are going to expire after one year and then a few expire after two years and a few expire after three years after that everybody who gets appointed thereafter is on the same term except for the youth position um, and that's really just to get the original start of the commission so that you don't have a turnover of everybody at once and so it doesn't make sense for the bylaws in terms of what you need moving forward this is just what um, council adopted so that they would have that rolling uh, each year there'd be three different people changing out and it wouldn't be a turnover of you know 11 people all at once so right, it, it really didn't make sense for the bylaws to have that information because that doesn't help you in the terms of transaction of your business moving forward and that's what these right. are supposed to be. i guess my question is and that thank you for that clarification that you know i think you said that last time um, so, but mine is when it says four members shall serve a one year term, which will include the youth appointment, four members shall serve a two year, and three members shall serve a three year. And I'm not still sure with our different positions, except for the youth person who's doing the, the one year, the two year, or the three year term. And, and how will that be decided? Or am so, I missing so something here? Yeah, so thank you. Um, that's something that is within, you know, the purview of council to oversee. So that's going to be something that council is going to make sure that that from staff perspective, we're going to make sure council takes a look at and has no um, desire to change that. And really it's based on a function of, uh, you know, how difficult it is to find people who can and are willing to step and able to step into certain positions because some the qualifications are so very specific with this body that some of the positions it's easy to find lots of people with qualifications some it, it's difficult uh, to find those who are qualified and willing to serve so for those we don't want it, an immediate turnover um, but that's going to be once council has a chance to make sure that they have viewed it then that will be communicated out but you know the important thing remember we're just talking about the bylaws here and that is just to guide you as you move forward and consider things that are within your scope of authority. So right. because so, that's so that, that you uh, deal with as the authority of the body itself, that really doesn't need to be within the bylaws. Right, so that language got taken out. Correct. But, it's, but, but even though it got taken out, it's still, uh, it's still something that needs to be addressed. And we as commissioners need to know how long we're going to be on the commission for that's i guess my question also but that's separate from bylaws so thank you yes yes thank you yeah. anyone well, else have a question i have a comment i was looking at the uh, uh, draft of the work plan and i was trying to um, map that to uh, what's the, the phrase here the meeting agenda um, so I gotta pull up, get the right book, book here, uh, the order of business, and um, which is in section five. And I was a little perplexed by one in that I think it's April 6th. We are there's an action item on the fourth plane safety corridor, but there's no informational um, introduction to that material which kind of struck me as a bit odd. It's kind of like, okay, we're gonna pop this one out to you, take a vote. Uh, what, what, what's the it we're talking about here? So it almost seems like you might want to say, you have to entertain some idea uh, in the information section at a previous meeting before you can then you know, take a vote on it. I mean, how else would the public know what in the world they're commenting on if it's never been kind of brought up to daylight previously. So, so Ken, uh, thank you for that comment. Um, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not involved with, with projecting out future agendas, so I won't comment specifically on, on the example that you brought forward. However, you know, it's not that unusual for a body, whether it's an advisory body or one that takes action 
to be presented with something and you would get materials ahead of time for you to consider, but be presented with something on the agenda for action that perhaps you would not have gotten briefed on on an informational item previously. Um, I'll let uh, you know Jennifer or, or Anna or perhaps other people on staff speak to how they anticipate um, bringing things forward and perhaps putting them as an informational item in advance of having you have them as an action item. Uh, I don't know that you would want to require that in your bylaws because there may be things where you want to be, um, you want to take action on and, and you really don't need two meetings to do it. You can be briefed on it and take action and, and make your decision all in one meeting, which a lot of boards and commissions do. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pause here and let um, staff step in as to how they plan to see this move forward. Yeah, so that's a really good point, Ken, and a really good catch. So the, the challenge with that project is that it's already, um, well, hasn't necessarily started, and I was going to provide a little bit of background on it tonight, but um, we have an RFP, a request for proposals to get a consultant on board to do a traffic analysis, and so um, there's other components to the projects beyond just the traffic analysis, and so what we'd be looking at at that meeting would be the, the results of the traffic analysis, but I can definitely find time on the agenda to bring more background information on the project. We did have the meeting um, on January 5th where we've got that informational item about current and upcoming transportation projects and programs. And so I was gonna talk about that one, but not maybe to you know, the detail that you would like. So um, I can definitely shift that one around, but I think that's a good point. And I, like David said, I think it's a good idea to not restrict yourselves to being able to take action on something for the first time if it's not um, uh, you know, something it, that's too controversial or that you need you know, additional information on or, or background. Um, in, in any case, um, for an action item, if you don't feel comfortable moving forward with it at that meeting, you can always move it to another meeting as well. Does that help? Do we have, is everybody still here? Did we lose a requester? Yeah, he gave the thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, thank you, Matt, for, for pointing that out. Uh, in making sure that we have an accurate record in terms of what everyone does and says, one of the big things, you know, I think we mentioned earlier, uh, Jennifer mentioned, we wanna have you have your cameras on the entire time, but also, when you are giving any input, whether you are giving your assent or, or whatever, do make sure both when we actually do end up meeting in person uh, at some point in the future, and certainly for right now to verbalize, uh, you know, your reactions, because it's not going to be, it's difficult to record it otherwise, uh, you know, nodding your head, um, giving a thumbs up, those kinds of things usually indicate assent, but uh, they won't get picked up on this kind of format. So uh, do make sure that, that if you are in agreement with something or you've been satisfied with an answer on something that you are verbalizing that. So we do have that down on the record. Okay, thank you for your answer. I, that makes more sense to me now. Complete sense. Okay. <laughs> and then um, there was one change. So, from the last time that we reviewed the, the bylaws with you, we realized there was one kind of error um, in the bylaws and that's on, um, let's see what page is that on? If, yeah, if you could keep scrolling, Jan, thanks. It's under, yeah, keep going, thank you. It's there under section five. It's actually right there. Yeah. Oh, order of business. We realized that under communications, um, under F, letter, 
or II, the second one there, the Transportation Mobility Commission members and committees. We mistakenly took that over from Planning Commission um, bylaws, and it's not necessarily something that other committees and commissions do. Um, we could leave in there the committees because that was intended for if we were going to set up a, a subcommittee um, or a technical advisory group to the commission, but that wasn't intended to be in there. And so um, we were thinking maybe we could take that out, but um, I don't know if you had any desire for communications for the, for the meeting times or um, you know, if that was something that you were interested in keeping, but that was just kind of an error on our part when we were going through the bylaws and saw that we had missed that to take that out. Are you referring strictly to the word, the last two words and committees or the entire? For the members. Sentence? Yeah, for like, so for every meeting, um, and I had it because uh, I set up the agenda for tonight's meeting based on the structure of the bylaws. So it would, you wouldn't have a time on every single agenda to do communication from the commission members, but we would leave it just for if we had committees or some um, advisory groups in the future. It's not obligatory that you make a comment, is it? Nope. So I'm thinking to the city council where they often will say something, you know, I'll, I went to this great seminar last week and I'd like to share, you know, a, a takeaway. I think that's kind of cool myself. You know, gee, I read this really interesting article on something germane to the evening's business. You know, that might be an interesting thing to share out. I don't know. That's just. And, and given how much we have that it's going on in the city, it, it might be a nice opportunity to have people share something that's going on. Okay. That I might not know about. Yeah. I agree. We keep it. Okay. So are you looking for a motion? Yeah. Well, if there are, uh, yeah, if there are no more uh, questions about specific provisions of bylaws, then yes, the, the process would be, um, and again, this will be what the chair will, will be doing as we, as we move forward. But, um, you know, Jennifer, I will, will ask for a motion and somebody would just to walk everyone through it. Uh, somebody would make a motion to uh, adopt the bylaws uh, without amendment or with amendment if you wanted to take that provision out. Sounds like you don't, but it, whoever, whoever wants to make the motion can make that motion. And then it would be seconded. And once it's seconded, we would ask if there's more discussion about it. And if not, then um, you know, probably Jennifer would call for a vote and just go, she would say everyone's name, first and last name. And then you say, you know, yes or no, or I or nay, however you feel comfortable. Yes or no is totally fine. Thank you. Is there anybody that's interested in making a motion? So it's just basically, um, I just have some, <clears throat> it, you know, I, I move, uh, and you know, you would say your name that we recommend approval of the transportation and mobility bylaws as presented by staff. It could be something as simple as that. All right, well, I'll do it. Ken Williams moves <laughs> that we adopt the uh, adopt the um, bylaws on amendment as presented by staff. I second. Okay, and then I need to go through. Oh, who was the second on that? I'll I'll second the motion, Mike Payne. Okay, thank you, Mike. Okay, Leah. Yes. And the Ken did the motion. Diria? Yes. Okay. Michelle? Yes. Matt? Yes. Carson? Yes. Teresa? Yes. Eduardo? Yes. Okay. I think I got everybody. And I don't have to ask for Mike, right? Because he seconded it. Mike, so you, we'll you yes. do the, the maker Mike of the motion. Yes. Usually, you do the second, the second, the last, and the maker of the motion last. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, and then Ken. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
All right. See how fun I'm sure you guys are all just watching this and thinking, I wish I could be chair and going through all this right now. Right. <laughs> Making notes just in case. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Um, whew. Okay. So the next thing that we have on the agenda is to um, hopefully identify a chair for the commission. So I sent, so Mike was the only person that sent um, an informational um, kind of background on why he was interested in being the chair for the commission. So I sent that out to all of you to take a look at, and I didn't know if anybody else was interested or if, if Mike is um, the only person that's interested in participating as chair. I'm willing to serve as vice chair um, and I can give a little bit of background. I uh, work for a tourism organization and I have led committees before where it's sort of a similar type of process where you need to be listening and absorbing a lot of feedback, but also keeping things moving and kind of sticking to a timeline. So if nobody else is interested, I'm willing to step into that vice chair role. Great, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, well then somebody on the commission would need to make a motion again um, to nominate um, Mike Payne as chair of the Transportation and Mobility Commission. So this is Matt Herman. I'll make the motion to elect Mike Payne as the chair of the Transportation and Mobility Commission. I can second William that. Second. Oh. <laughs> okay, so who was that, that, that on the second? Ken Williams. Thank you, Ken. Uh, and, and Jennifer, I just asked, are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? <laughs> okay. No, but you know, I really want to say who's on first. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Jennifer, if you want to call for uh, the vote and do a roll call vote again. Okay. Uh, okay, Carson. Uh, yes. And then, let's see, Ken second it. Okay, and so Diria? Yes. Okay. Leah? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And does Mike get to vote for himself? I was going to ask that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you certainly, uh, you can, yes. Mike? But if you say nothing, it means yes. There are no other uh, people to vote for, so I will vote for Mike Payne as well. Mike okay. Payne votes for Mike Payne. Okay. <laughs> Teresa? Yes, and thank you, Mike. Uh, Eduardo? Yes. Okay. And then we have to do the same. Oh, I'm sorry. And then I got to go back. So I'll go back to Ken. Yes. Okay. And then Matt? Yes. Okay. Did I do that right this time? Yes. Thank you. Yay. Okay. <laughs> and so that's uh, unanimous. And yes. congratulations. Yes. To our new chair. Thank you. Yes. And I will, um, I'll set up a call with you, Mike, so that we can meet and we can go over all of this. Um, we have cheat sheets for you. Uh, it sounds like you have a lot of experience already, but we've got cheat sheets of, you know, things to say and process. Um, so we've got a lot already in place. Um, thanks to the great work of um, Kristen Hole with the Planning Commission. So I think that'll be really helpful for you. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll send out something so we can get it set up as soon as possible because the first meeting is going to come quick on December 1st. Sure. Thank you. Yes. As a commission member, I would like to uh, move to nominate Michelle McKenzie. Is that right? As a uh, vice chair. I second the motion. This is Daria. Great. Okay. Let me go through, or do you, do you want to go through Mike? I mean, you can go through. <laughs> I, I don't have a list of everyone's names. I'll let okay. you do this roll call and I can proceed from there if you'd like. Okay. Let's, let's ask first if there are any other nominations. Oh. Yeah. Are there any other nominations? <laughs> <laughs> you always say it twice. So it's just, okay. Goes. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. Ken? Yes. Matt? Yes. Leah? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Carson? Uh, yes. Uh, Teresa? 
Uh, yes, and I want to make one comment. Uh, we were able to read Mike's background in that, which was helpful and informational. And I really appreciate what Michelle just shared with us with her experience on other committees, because I think that will be good for us also. So. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Eduardo? Yes. Okay. And then Diria? Diria, are you okay with the, you need to give us a yes, a yay for the, yeah. <laughs> it works better when you unmute, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, and then Mike. Mike, I vote yes for Michelle as well. Okay, great, thank you. Phew, all right, thank you so much for both of you for uh, willing to um, step up and um, work to be on the chair and the vice chair role. So thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you. So what we have next on the agenda is um, the work plan for 2021 and 2022. Do you, um, okay, so Jan's bringing that up. So the work plan um, is, is identified as informational, mainly because the work plan is going to be changing pretty consistently through um, the year. And I, I went ahead and um, set it out through the end of 2021. And, um, you know, again, this is kind of our initial thought of the items that will be coming to the Transportation and Mobility Commission over the next year or so, but it will change. And this is a, an attempt at trying to figure out timelines for projects and when they might come to the Transportation and Mobility Commission. And I, I debated, because originally on tonight's agenda, I had the presentation that's slated for the 5th of January about the overview of transportation projects and programs that we're working on. And it looks like we might have had some time on the agenda to have done that tonight, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to rush through our first meeting. And I think that was a good idea, particularly all the technological challenges that we've had with it. So this will give you kind of a little bit of an overview of the projects that will be coming to the commission, but there's a lot of other projects going on and that will be um, actually a lot wrapping up next year in terms of the capital side and so um, uh, hopefully it doesn't get too confusing seeing this work plan before kind of having a better foundation of what we're working on right now um, but as you can see for kind of through the rest of this year we've got the rest of our onboarding sessions except for the additional one that will be in January and uh, I had identified the December 1st meeting that's just here in what like two weeks um, for the transportation system plan so the transportation system plan kicked off last fall and um, we were getting ready um, to start a really huge and pretty significant public outreach process with the community in march of this year when the pandemic hit and then um, when uh, the city started to have um, economic impacts from the covid uh, pandemic, we had to significantly reduce the budget for the project. So we um, had quite a few months where the project was on hold uh, while we tried to work through to see if we would have any budget at all. And, and just to give you a sense of the, the project budget is just a little over a million dollars. And so it was cut down to about $200,000 um, through um, the budget impacts through the city. And so we had to really scramble to kind of reorganize the scope of work and it was initially thought that we would be just trying to finish some elements through the end of 2020 to get some work done and some progress made on the transportation system plan not knowing if we would get the additional funding to keep the project moving thankfully in council's budget that was adopted the remaining funding that we need to reinstate the million dollar budget for the project is in there so we'll get to keep the project moving forward and so it's anticipated to wrap up about the end of 2022, actually now, uh, because of the delay that we had this year. And so there's been a lot of work um, kind of related to more of the existing conditions 
and system analysis that's been done um, over the last few months. And then um, we just started a soft launch of public outreach on the project at the end of last week. And I haven't had the opportunity um, to push that information out to you yet. So I'll get that out to you. And we've done some social media posts, but we'll start to push that out a little bit more. But there's a Be Heard page. So if you're familiar, there's the City of Vancouver website, and then we have a lot of our project um, web pages or um, our project components on a different system called Be Heard. So it's Be Heard Vancouver. And if you go, if you if you Google that and go to that, there's different components to that site um, that have information on different projects that the city's working on. And the transportation system plan is one of those. And we right now have an online open house. Um, there's a um, kind of a virtual um, map um, that you process that you can go through that gives you information and background on the city and then ask some survey questions again more focused on the existing conditions and how you use the transportation system right now. So there's been a lot of work and so we just allotted the full two hours for the next meeting to try to get you caught up on that um, to try to share with you uh, what's been done so far and then kind of what our work program elements are um, that we're focusing on kind of over the next four months and so the, you know repeatedly uh, the transportation system plan will come to you uh, throughout next year and then well into um, 2022 and we're envisioning the adoption of the plan probably towards the end of 2022 but there's some pretty significant work elements as part of the TSP um, so, uh, but a lot of it, a lot of exciting stuff um, that we're working on. One of the main things that we've been doing right now, um, kind of during this this time of the decreased budget, is we're building a collision dashboard, and um, it's taking data from WashDOT on a monthly basis and pulling that into a GIS-based system, and um, it'll provide staff just a very easy dashboard to where we can go in and see updated information, run queries on collisions. So that's been a high priority for us. So it's great to finally see that um, coming together. That should be done probably by the end of the year, but we can hopefully during this presentation give you kind of like a little bit of a snapshot of what that looks like. We just have a beta in place right now because um, we're just trying to work through um, the data, um, where to get the data from, because there's data from Washington State Patrol that we could download and other sources from WashDOT. So it's been just a challenge trying to figure out where um, the best data lies. And then we've also um, created a good working relationship with Vancouver Police Department and the GIS analysts that they have and partnering with them to make sure that the dashboard that we create is helpful for them too. And this will actually significantly reduce the amount of time that they're spending on their collision um, analysis. And theirs is different for what they do for the police officers. It's more precinct based and um, kind of letting them know what's been going on in different timelines and, and they kind of um, use the data a little bit differently, but to be able to create a dashboard that's useful for all of us, um, I think will be- Jennifer? Yeah. So if I could just jump in for just one second from the communication side of things. Um, I just want to encourage everyone and don't feel bad at all. You're going to hear a lot of acronyms and a lot of technical phrases and a lot of initials and things like that. Do not feel at all um, shy of saying, what, does, what is that? Because we tend to get, do that quite a bit. I ask all the time. You won't be alone if you ask. So it's OK. So when we talk about TSP, meaning the Transportation System Plan, and, and any of the elements of it, be sure to just ask us and, um, and everyone can, and you'll get a good explanation. I just kind of want to make sure we're all on the same bench with that. So there you go. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's okay. Thank and, you, Loretta. And, and to, be, to, to be clear, the Be Heard site is um, a site that the city is using to get public information, participation, input. And that might be different than just an actual web page where there's a project web page and updates going along. Um, sometimes we'll have both, and sometimes it'll just be one because it often depends on where it's at in the process. But um, as you go along, if you're looking for information, uh, let us know and we can help get that to you. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Jen. 
No, yeah, no, that's helpful. Please, um, I know it's a lot of information to go through. So if you do have a question, um, just you know, let me know or raise your raise your hand. Um, Jan should be watching, and somebody can stop me and let me know if um, if you have a question. And again, I, I know it's hard to kind of look at the work plan um, before kind of getting that overview of the the current and um, upcoming projects that we'll be working on. Um, and I just wanted to throw out the caveat that my hope was to have, so what we have on the work plan for the first is to have the consultant come in and talk about the, the transportation system plan. I'm a little nervous that they won't be able to get the information together because of the Thanksgiving holiday, because of when we need to post it. But um, right now, that's what we have planned. Uh, potentially, it may be that we end up doing a flip-flop um, uh, with some of the information from the January 5th at the December meeting. Um, so that was just a little bit of, of overview on, on that December 1st meeting. Again, the January 5th meeting would be Anna uh, coming and talking to you about uh, current projects that we're working on and that are upcoming. We'd also have Ryan LaPosa come in, who's the Streets and Operations Manager, come in and give you just a, um, an overview of public works and kind of what they do, um, their budget and their role. So to give you an overview on, on just um, the significant am amount of work that they're doing and the projects that they're working on. There's a lot of capital projects that are going on right now, um, just um, different designs that um, they're working on as well. So that would be really helpful and, and um, I think a good partnership with just this, the perspective from the transportation planning side as well. And then we have that last onboarding session on the 5th. And then from there, uh, we try to start to bring in some presentations about specific programs. So there are some very significant pavement management projects that will be happening in 2022 and 2023 that um, could provide some really good safety projects and opportunities to look at repurposing some of our roadways in the city. And so um, I thought it was important to have somebody come, which will most likely be Chris Snyder, who's the program manager come and talk about kind of the in and outs of the pavement management program, but then also give you an overview of upcoming projects. Um, so that one's kind of more of a higher level informational one. Uh, and just to give you a background, um, <laughs> um, to give you, um, you know, some background on the operations of the pavement management program. And then um, also, I have intended on that agenda is the West Side Bike Mobility Project. So if you um, have not been around the city very much in the last uh, two years or so, we've been working um, and spending quite, about a, quite a significant amount of time on the West Side Bike Mobility Project. And so the, the last update that I have received on that project um, as of the end of last week um, well, and in council's budget, uh, their budget was approved uh, for the funding for that project. Um, and then we also, as a backup or um, as a way to uh, preserve the city funds, we applied for a grant through the Washington State Department of Transportation. They have a grant cycle every two years for bicycle and pedestrian projects. And we submitted a grant this year for the Columbia project. And um, Anna did a, a virtual walkthrough with uh, staff up in Olympia a couple weeks ago and the project is ranking really high. So we're, um, we've got our fingers crossed that we'll get funding from the state for that project, which will um, allow for the city funds that have been identified in the city's budget for that project to go to other needs within the city. Um, but what I've um, been told is that we were actually looking at doing the entire project next year. So. In 2021, um, they would come in and do the microsurfacing treatment on Columbia uh, from Mill Plain South. And then they would do a paving project on Columbia from Mill Plain all the way to 45th Street. So they would actually do the entire length of the project. And up to this point, we've talked about phasing that project and um, splitting it potentially between 2021 and 2022. But um, right now, the direction that we're moving with is doing the entire project next year, doing the entire paving project, all the curb ramps, and all of the, the bicycle and pedestrian and multimodal improvements next year. So um, hopefully the timing for that one to bring it to you on February 2nd 
We'll try to give you um, a background on the project, what we've done so far with it, and then just let you know where we're at with the project. Um, so again, that one's just more informational uh, because um, we're pretty far along in the process for that one, but we wanted to share, uh, we've got 90% plans for the project developed. And I know some of you have been actively involved in that project over the last several years. So it's um, to bring you up to speed to where we're at, but that's kind of just a quick background on the, the West Side Bike Mobility Project. And then for the March meeting, um, we did another project a couple years ago on the Glaughlin Boulevard uh, between Reserve and Brant Road, where we implemented traffic calming, some pedestrian safety enhancements, some crossings, and then we did a pilot project for a bike facility through the corridor. And right now, Anna has been the lead um, in doing some evaluation for that project. So we've been doing some public outreach, online open houses, going to the neighborhood associations, and we just wanted to provide you an update on um, what we're hearing about the results of that uh, public outreach process. We've done also some data collection, traffic counts, um, bike and ped counts as well. So that was more of a, an informational um, presentation just to bring you up to speed on that project too. And then later on, you'll see in the agenda, it'll be closer towards the end of the summer of next year. We'll bring that one more back to you as an action item uh, when we get final results from the evaluation process and a final recommendation on whether we should keep the pilot element of that project, so essentially the bike facility project um, or the bike facility component of that project. And then um, also in the March meeting, uh, we had wanted to talk to you about the transportation grant program. So uh, we have a very aggressive grant program at the city. Um, typically, uh, for every dollar that the city puts in of city funds, we usually get back, just depending on the year and the cycle, we usually get back four to seven dollars for each dollar that we put in. So we get four to seven dollars in grant funds from different organizations for every dollar that we put in. So we've been pretty successful at the city um, and we've just um, been able to manage um, a lot of capital improvements and um, a lot of um, just safety improvements, bike pet improvements throughout the city um, using grants. And so we were just gonna provide you just an overview of kind of grant programs, our grant process. So that would most likely would be Chris Malone from city staff uh, coming to talk to you about that. Uh, but I tried to make sure on the resource page that we, we set up for the Transportation Mobility Commission, a lot of the grant, uh, the primary grant sources that we use are listed on there just to kind of help you um, better understand where those sources are, sources are coming from. But uh, grants are huge for us. Uh, we need those to keep our programs going. And then um, later um, into next year, so this is kind of where Ken's question was um, in terms of the action item for the fourth plane project. So we, um, we have um, a grant from the Washington State Department of Transportation that we got in 2018. Um, and it was through their city safety program. And the grant that we received from the Department of Transportation was to make improvements on Fourth Plain between F Street and Fort Vancouver Way. And it was based on the amount of serious and fatal collisions that were happening in that segment of Fourth Plain. So for that grant program, you basically um, did, we did a collision analysis for the city, found where we were having um, high collision intersections and corridors. This one was very prominent and um, the state did a cost benefit analysis, looking at ways to mitigate the collisions in that segment of the corridor. And so it would basically look at repurposing um, the, the, the amount of room that we have on fourth plane. So right now it's two lanes in each direction. Uh, what the grant um, supported through the cost benefit analysis was that um, removing one travel lane in each direction um, and adding a center turn lane and then adding bike facilities would signif significantly improve um, the collision uh, history and the collision issue in the, uh, or would significantly reduce collisions in the corridor. So that's a grant that we had from the state and we put a request out for a consultant just within the last month to do a traffic study of that segment. But then also um, just another way of how interconnected we are 
Uh, the pavement program is actually going to be looking at repaving Fourth Plain Boulevard, actually all the way from pre pretty much from uh, Fruit Valley Road um, to Andreessen Road, um, starting in 2021, going or I'm sorry, starting in 2022, 2023, and maybe into 2024. But they are going to be looking at repaving that entire section of Fourth Plain from Fruit Valley to Andreessen, and so. Um, that is one of the city's highest collision corridors. And so we wanted to take an opportunity along with the grant that we have from the state, we wanted to, to look at what other potential safety improvements we could do in that segment of fourth plane before they resurfaced it. Because uh, again, when, when they come through and they do a pavement project, we have a clean slate. And so we have the ability to make um, a lot of pretty, uh, potentially pretty significant improvements to improve safety on the corridor. And so what this action item was, was bringing to you the results of the traffic analysis. So we'll have the consultant go through, look at um, potential impacts, like with the grant that we have for that specific segment. If we were to remove a travel lane in each direction, what that would do to capacity on the corridor, what that would do to capacity at the intersections. But we're also having them continue that all the way to Andreessen. And so um, that was what that action item was, but I can make that and kind of reorganize the, um, the work plan to bring that more as an informational to get you caught up on all this since there's a lot um, already happening with it. And then I could bring that back as an action item later on, but we wanted to get your feedback on, uh, you know, based on the results of the traffic analysis and um, recommendations on how to move forward. We wanted to get your feedback on that. Um, yeah, I'll just stop there because that's a lot of information. So, but I, but I'm also curious. Um, so I, I assume that this would connect from F Street West to where the bike lanes actually stop. Yeah, there's yeah. a couple of blocks there that that there would no not be connectivity. Yeah, thank you. So the grant the grant was F Street to Fort Vancouver, but I made um, so they're looking their analysis is basically. Uh, just a little west of D Street uh, to Andreessen. So yes, you're right. There is a little bit of a gap there west of F Street. So they'll be looking at that. Any other questions before I move on? Um, maybe you're going to talk about this as you move on. I'm looking, there's a bunch of um, safety projects listed yep. in June, but I think I saw um, a presentation to council maybe a month ago, and it listed some additional safety projects. There was a, I think 112th Avenue yes. and Fort Vancouver Way. So is that likely also be addressed in that, somewhere in that period also? Yes, so um, great point, and I appreciate you keeping track of things so well. So, um, so yes, so uh, again, in conjunction with upcoming pavement projects, paving projects. Um, they will be looking at doing Fort Vancouver Way in 2023. So we'll be studying Fort Vancouver Way in 2022. And then also Main Street right now, Upper Main Street is slotted for 2023. So we'll be looking at that one in 2022. I, um, I failed to put on here 112th. Um, I think because I'm like in denial of just all the amount of work that we have um, coming over the next year. So I need to add actually 112. So these groupings of, um, if you look at the June 1st meeting, so McGilvery is slated for a segment of that to be uh, repaved in 2022. Southeast 34th Street, that is going to be repaved between uh, 164th and 192nd in 2022. And then as I mentioned, um, the fourth plane uh, work will go um, between like 2022, 2023, and probably 2024. And so I do need to add 112th on here. And um, I believe the section of 112th that they'll be doing in 2022 is, it's moved so much. I think it's Chakalov up to... Um, it's first. It's what I read somewhere on the... Okay. On the on the presentation that the, the council okay so um it's almost fourth plane 
Yeah, so, but they will be doing the full corridor of 112th. So I think the, the other segment of 112th will be out in um, 2024. So we need to look at that as, as another project as well. So I need to add that on here. Plus there were some capital projects that were added on. Um, so the multimodal uh, program where the funding um, uh, was removed for that this year, that program was re reinstated with additional funds from council through the budget cycle. So there's some other capital projects. And when I say capital project, it's a sidewalk infill project. It's building a, a pathway to a school. It's adding bike facilities on different streets. It's adding um, crossing improvements like refuge islands or the, the what we call the RFBs, the, the signs that flash yellow when you push a button for people to cross the street. So there's also a, a, a very big list of projects that were improved um, in the budget process as well. And so, and, and the commitment was we could get those built in the next two years. So the next budget biennium uh, with the caveat that um, the first two, um, which were uh, Northwest Neighborhood Connectivity, which is a, um, a safe routes to school project that we have up in the um, near Franklin Elementary it, it fully funds that project and keeps that project moving forward. And that's a project that our um, capital group is working on. And then there's a second project um, to, to do some fourth plane pedestrian crossing safety improvements. And again, we wanna make sure that we time that with um, the paving project and another reason for the traffic study and the analysis. So we know where those need to go and what the appropriate treatment is. Um, those two, we have the staff capacity to do along with all these other things that I'm outlining in the work plan, but there were other, also quite a few other projects that were approved um, for the next biennium, but um, we're trying to figure out how we can do those with the capacity uh, that we have right now. So that's probably why I left 112th off because um, we're not quite sure. So it's just Anna Dearman and myself are the, and I think I mentioned this, are, are the only two transportation planners. And so we're looking at doing all of this, uh, the transportation system plan, um, supporting the commission. Um, it's just a lot of work for the two of us to take on over the next year. So we're continuing to kind of work through that um, in terms of capacity. And then also um, that, that again is another reason why this work plan will probably continue to change pretty, probably pretty um, regularly. But does that, does that help answer your question, Ken? Yes, it does. Okay, and then um, the reason that I have a fourth plane on here again is so in addition to the grant that we have and the traffic analysis process that we're gonna be doing and bringing to you early next year, we also have budget to do a pretty significant public outreach process for fourth plane. So we're doing the traffic analysis from essentially F or D Street to Andreessen Road and looking at what opportunities we have um, to improve safety in the corridor. So if, if repurposing one of the travel lanes is an option, if, if the street has the capacity to handle that, if the intersections can handle that, um, if the community is acceptable with um, additional delay in the corridor because of that, what do we do with that additional space? So we have another um, contract that we would be putting out just to have somebody help us with public outreach. So we would have a, a fairly robust public outreach process to talk with the community about how we should reuse that space. So we've got, um, you know, the Vine BRT on there. You know, one option is doing um, BRT only lanes um, so they don't have to be in travel and they have better um, reliability with their service. One option uh, we've got infrequent um, sections of bike lanes on the corridor. We could look at adding bike facilities on the corridor or doing a transit and bike hybrid, but there's obviously safety issues with that um, because of the nature of the businesses on the corridor. Some people have requested on street parking uh, to help support the businesses. So there's a lot of different options. And so um, that's kind of the, the process and why the fourth plane one comes to you so much is that not only do we have the traffic safety analysis results, but then we also need to go out and talk to the public about what potential improvements uh, they'd like to see. And 
built into these other projects like McGilvery, um, not so much South East 34th, just given the nature of, of where that street is, but there's public outreach process built into those as well. Um, and, and also 112th, that'll be pretty significant as well. So just to let you know, it's not just analysis um, that we're doing, it's, um, it's public outreach as a component of the project. It's just fourth plane is, is a little bit different. Um, you know, one of our, uh, well, it is our tra most transit dependent um, communities on the corridor um, uh, and are typically um, some of our most underserved um, community of the city. So we just wanna make sure that we um, do what we can to improve safety, given that it is one of our highest collision corridors in the city. So um, yeah, there's just, again, <laughs> Um, there's a lot going on next year. Um, and so as we kind of move into the summer of next year, kind of third quarter, I wasn't sure about July 6th, um, but I probably can fill that in now that we've got 112th and some other uh, projects that we're learning about. So, um, you know, again, I'll bring this to you as it changes um, during kind of like my staff communication time um, and just keep you updated um, on how these change, so you are, you know, are kept up to date. Um, and then again, bringing you the transportation system plan pretty frequently throughout the year. And there's that action item for McLaughlin safety project evaluation um, early in the fall of next year, so we can um, make a decision on how we want to uh, move forward with that pilot project, whether we want to keep the street striped as is, or if we want to do something different. And then. Uh, you'll see these action items um, in uh, early October. So McGilvery, 34th, 4th Plain, and then we'll also add 112th to this as well. So the way that the pavement program is structured, we need to get them, actually, this is probably, well, I'll, I might have to bump this up, but they need uh, final kind of design plans from us by the end of the year because they go out and they do their contracts in early, so they'll be doing their contracts in early 2022. And so we need to make decisions on these projects um, fairly early in the fall. So I actually might flip flop this a little bit or change some things around. Um, but yeah, we need to get them design plans because they need to know, it, particularly as, the stri as it relates to striping, they need to know how much to incorporate into their contracts because um, thankfully, we have a really great partnership with them. And so even when we do make some pretty significant changes to the striping, they typically don't um, need funds or ask for funds from us or a grant. Um, they, they use that out of the pavement management program funds. So um, that's the most critical piece is getting them the striping plans and the same with this year. So we're, we're working um, pretty diligently to get them the final plans for the West Side Bike Mobility Project so they can get that in their contract for early next year. So it'll be the same thing next year and the year after with Fort Vancouver Way and um, Main Street. So that kind of gives us um, a pretty aggressive timeline that we need to work on, but they've done a great job of giving us more and more notice about um, their projects and when they're, um, what they're thinking in terms of several years ahead. So that's been really helpful. Um, I had on here uh, for an annual retreat in October, and I didn't mention too that in um, April, I had kind of a little mini spring retreat. And we've kind of talked about having that as a way to check in since it's been so challenging trying to set this group up um, all online. Um, um, we just wanted to check in after kind of a few meetings and um, you know, see how things are going. Hopefully we're doing a lot better with, with Zoom um, and just kind of hear some feedback from you. We'll have uh, Kevin come in and facilitate that with you. And it's just a chance to um, make sure that we're trying to do what we can to support you um, given the challenges that we're under and if there's anything else that we can do or consider incorporating into the process, that's kind of, so that's a, a bit unusual to have a spring retreat but I thought it was pretty important to have a check-in with all of you kind of early on um, since it, it's been a challenge. And then it's a very kind of um, traditional to have an annual retreat um, towards the end of the year. Uh, Eric will come back again and talk with the group. Um, so, um, and then we'll talk about kind of work plan 
And then you'll see um, on the November 2nd meeting, just again, kind of conf confirmation of that work plan and more TSP. Um, and then at the end of the year, we need to, to do an election again of the chair and the vice chair. So um, hopefully this wasn't too much information and but hopefully it helps to kind of see uh, the types of projects that we're working on. What, what you don't see on here are a lot of the, um, the capital projects. Um, so like um, Southeast First Street, 18th Street, uh, 137th, uh, there's another one, Jefferson Kaufman, um, you know, Northwest Neighborhood Connectivity. Uh, we've got a sidewalk project on Divine. We, uh, most of these projects are at the 75% to 90% level of design so that means that they're pretty far along and so by the time that we would be able to get them to you they'd be complete um, most likely going out for environmental permitting if if you're interested you know we can share plans for those but that's one of the things that you'll kind of see missing at least in 2021 is we're we're kind of in this transition period where we're finishing up a lot of capital projects and a lot of process on those. So there isn't really an opportunity for the commission to necessarily weigh in, but then we'll start on some more in probably like 2022. So it's just kind of a weird transitional year, but I did wanna address that um, if, you're, if you're kind of wondering, you know, that was one of the things that we had identified as the commission's role, um, but you know, we'll share more about those when we do that presentation on kind of current projects that we're working on but um, it's a lot of information, but we're more than happy to share plans with you. Uh, but again, they're just in a, in a stage in the process where their um, you know, right of way has been purchased and they're just uh, far along in uh, like Southeast First, um, hopefully we'll go out to construction next year. So um, if you're wondering about that. And then the other big one that's kind of missing from here that I wasn't what, sure what to do with is the I-5 bridge. So, you know, I forwarded you that um, information about the, the kind of the, that project, the official restart or the official kickoff of that. And so there will be times where there will be I-5 bridge information brought to the commission. It will most likely be focusing on the project and the impacts to the local system. So, um, you know, the, the past project, the CRC project, had really significant impacts to the downtown street system um, and then other streets throughout the city. So that most likely will be in the type of um, way it'll come to you, uh, but th that's kind of an unknown for us. So that is missing out of this work plan. There will be points most likely that there will be information coming to you next year on the bridge, but I just didn't, we don't know yet um, enough about that project to kind of figure out where that would plug in to the cycle. Um, Jennifer, Jennifer, yeah. I have a question about yeah. that. I was going to because I, I I watched the CTV when they did that I five executive committee just recently, um, and Ann, our our mayor is on that executive committee, and now I guess their next steps are looking at um, adding twenty five to thirty more members to represent a larger area in different categories. And my question was is that will she bring back information from that larger committee since it looks to me like she she's the person who's now representing the city so our long-range planning manager rebecca kennedy is on and she is our bridge expert so i'll let her answer that one if that's okay yeah um hi teresa there and and um good evening transportation and mobility commission um I joined a little late, um, but I appreciate you all being here. On the bridge, there is gonna be a robust public outreach process um, and communication process associated with that project led by the project office, which reports to the Washington Department of Transportation and the Oregon Department of Transportation. This is not a city run or managed project. The mayor sits on the executive steering committee, which is one of the uh, many elements of outreach and engagement and is specifically engaging project partners that have a direct role in operating, owning, permitting, um, or a direct economic development role in the bridge area or the construction of the bridge. Um, the mayor will be bringing back and staff will be bringing back information to the city council um, and no additional members will be added to the ESG. 
There will be a community advisory group associated with this as well that will advise the project office. That's, I think, what you're referencing, Tree. So that's the 25 member group. Um, they right. are going through yeah. a recruitment process now, um, and that that group will be made out up of um, representatives uh, from regionally from both sides mm -hmm. of the river representing a diverse array of stakeholders. Again, that's one element. They also will not be reporting back to the Transportation Mobility Commission directly. Again, they report to the project office um, and to the ESG. Staff, um, and when I say staff, I mean city staff who are staffing this project will report back to this group. Okay, thank you. So very likely myself, Erin Landy, um, or a senior transportation policy advisor that we are um, recruiting for right now would be reporting up and out updating this group. Um, and then it, I think at, at relevant points also involving project, you know, um, interstate bridge replacement program, project office staff where it makes sense. Um, but that would be probably a long way down the road. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or comments or, uh, you know, pro projects you see missing from here that you wanted to talk about? Um, I'm just wondering, since we're transportation and mobility, if the um, if CTRAN will be doing any sort of presentation on their projects so that we can be kept up to date on that, especially since if they're planning a north-south route um, and we're talking about projects in 2023 and such, it might might be beneficial. Yeah, thank you. That's a great point. Uh, yes. So, um, you know, we could have them come and share... Uh, right now, we're reviewing the 90% plans for the Mill Plain BRT project, but as they start the conversation, so they're looking at doing another BRT route that's currently uh, similar or the, almost the same alignment to the Highway 99 uh, route that they have going. So um, that is a, a good point. So I'll make sure to add that one. Any other questions or comments about this? I know I a lot of work. Yeah, I appreciate your guys' patience. It's just a ton of information to try to kind of slog through these first few meetings. So I know you're probably anxious to get actually working on something and <laughs> reviewing something. So again, um, it's just a lot of information to try to to get through. But I appreciate your patience. So, um, if, and you're welcome to, you know, share any comments that you have, um, you can send those to me as well. Um, and I can, once we kind of finalize this for right now, I can package it. So if you look in your handbook, there's a whole section of kind of a pullout component to the handbook. That's the work plan and org charts and some other things like that. I can get that sent out to you all for review. I just wanted to provide this opportunity um, to share this with you at the first meeting. Just maybe a typo on December of 2021. It says work plan for 2021, but I think you mean 2022. Yeah, thank you. Sounds so far away. <laughs> I, I also wanted to verify the dates on uh, the two last onboarding sessions in December. Is that indeed a Wednesday, December 9th, and Thursday, December 17th? Yes. Okay. I remember we changed one. I just wanted to verify that. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so with that, we will move into hopefully, I don't know if Jan has, has better capabilities, but um, we can move into the citizen communication. Is that something you can handle, Jan, or do you want me to do that? Yeah, I, um, I'm i gonna go ahead. We had uh, Richard Colbert. So Richard, I'm going to switch you over to a panelist now, which would allow you to um, share and allow you to have that opportunity. And then Jennifer, is it, um, you, I'll track the three minutes. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. And Richard, I would just remind you to please uh, start your video as well so we can see you.
Can we take off the shared screen so everybody's, I don't know how to do that. Can you see me? Hello? Can't see you. Okay. I can hear. I, I can't, I don't see how I, wait a minute, one second. There we go. Okay, my name is Richard Culver. Uh, before I moved up here about three years ago, I was a member of uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee. And one of the things that was covered was the complete streets. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this particular um, publication. It's by the, uh, what it's entitled is From Policy to Pavement. Implementing complete streets in the San Diego region. And it was prepared, it was published in June of 2013. And uh, what it does is takes a uh, complete streets plan and moves it from um, planning to actually implementing the plan. And it covers a whole bunch of pages. I'm not aware, I'm not sure if your engineers are aware of this particular plan or not. Also, Tacoma has, um, has published uh, the thing called Tacoma Complete Design, Complete Streets Design Guidelines Project. And one thing I would like to make an observation on is that on some of the major streets that we have uh, people that uh, use the uh, the speed limit as an advisory rather than as something they should actually restrict themselves to. And we have some people that travel away too fast on our streets. Is there anybody that has any questions concerning this guideline? No, oh, I thanks. I'll look into those. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, because it's something that um, we covered in there, and also I think we should look at. I don't know if you're already doing it, but traffic management systems sometimes will help in particular projects and on streets and such. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we Jennifer, have any? That's all that I had that I knew of that wanted to have public comment. Oh, okay. So the other participants were just listening then? Uh, or the attendees, I should say. I'll double check. So Bill, Bill didn't need to, he, he wasn't here to comment. Both of them said that they were just going to be listening when we were okay. stuck in that other meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I just have one, um, one a little confusion. I, I see a complete street programs, a uh, complete streets program on our page. Yes, we do. We have an adopted complete streets policy at the city. Okay. Yeah. Still fun to read other ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's always ways to learn. Okay. Um, so if we don't have any more um, citizen communication, maybe um, before we do Commission communication. David, should I just go through and take care of the absences, the excusals for the meeting? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Jennifer, if you um, want to go ahead, how many people are absent? Was it three or two? It's two, Chuck Freyer and Mario Rea. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, let me see. Is that something that Mike should? 
Yeah, that would be a that would be a good. Sorry, I had that bookmarked and then I dropped where it was. So yeah, so Mike, if you wanted to um, move to excuse the two uh, absent commissioners cool. for the meeting by the name of Chuck Frayer and I don't I apologize, I didn't catch the other one. Mario Rea, I think Rea. Rea? Yeah, it's Rea. Rea. So would these be excused or unexcused? Well, it wasn't like they asked, they said, oh, hey, I have a conflict going on. Gee, I'm sorry, I can't make it. It's just like a no-show, isn't that unexcused? Well, it, you, it's to a vote, so you can say you get a freebie on the first meeting. If somebody provides a, a reason why they cannot make it, you can certainly take that in consideration. Um, considering the challenges we've had tonight, I, I think you may, we can afford to be magnanimous, but it's a sweet decision as a body. I'm thinking Mario's not even come to any of the onboarding sessions either. Um, this is Rebecca. So we will institute a process for um, uh, letting people know, you know, letting the chair and staff know um, if you cannot make it to a meeting. Generally, the practice that we've had is if you give an advance notice or if you have some understandable conflict, personal emergency, um, that then, you know, the chair and vice chair will, will, or, and the commission can make a decision about whether they want to excuse that. Um, usually we'll just let people know in advance that, you know, we received, if so-and-so so has this conflict or they have this thing come up um, and, and the chair can facilitate that. I would say tonight to be probably magnet, what's, how do I say Magnanimous, it? <laughs> Magnanimous <laughs> makes sense. Um, but we will, you know, it's, it's not a no hard and true rule. Generally it's advanced notice if you know in advance and a good reason if you don't, and we, um, trust each other to be do that judiciously what are yeah. the uh i was gonna go ahead. Go ahead. please go ahead carson i was just gonna say uh what are the different consequences of an uh, excused and an unexcused uh, absence after three unexcused absences the council will review the appointment and make a decision about whether in a year sorry three unexcused in a year um that, that, that will get reported to council by the boards and commissions coordinator, um, and they can make a decision about whether they'd like to review that appointment or not. But it does factor into council decisions about whether um, folks should continue or and and reappointment considerations. Yeah. So just, just to just to highlight on that, if I may, in uh, Article 7, Section C for attendance in our bylaws that we just adopted, it says any absence may be excused by the commission unexcused absences from three consecutive regular meetings shall be reported to the city council. So that's we'll correct. Take yes. that into consideration with the, th with the three misses for the onboarding sessions, or are these just strictly for uh, commission meetings? It is, it's for the meetings technically. Uh, we, you know, we strongly encourage members to attend the onboarding sessions, but they're not required as for the bylaws or the meeting requirement. Thank you. Yeah, and because the bylaws only took effect starting today, today. Uh, we can't really apply that retroactively. Oh, okay. What is that too? Thank you. Well noted. Thank you. So is there, um, oh, you already made a motion, Mike, right? To yeah, well, I, I, I'll make a motion to excuse the absences on our first meeting with, with exception. I'd like to second that. Do you want to do the roll call? Jennifer, just to, to intercede here, it's not appropriate for the chair to be taking the roll call. Staff needs oh. to take the roll call vote. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Ken? Uh, yes. Matt? Yes. Carson? Yeah. Vera? Yes. Teresa? Yes. Eduardo? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And then was it Matt that seconded it? Uh, no, that was me, Carson. Oh, sorry, Carson. I still have it, yeah. Okay. Matt, uh, oh yeah, okay. 
and Mike, uh, I vote yes. Okay. <laughs> and I and I didn't respond, but yes. Okay. Thank you, Leah. <laughs> um, and then I have a quick question. It, it kind of falls in with all of this. Do do we have any idea when we might know what our term is? Um. I think it should be reasonable by the next meeting. That seems the ones that aren't here tonight will be receiving a one-year appointment. I'm just teasing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's reasonable that you'll know in advance of the next meeting and we appreciate your patience on this. I have a question about, about how the length of these, will, will the three-year term maybe be for the people who have a lot more expertise in transportation so there is more of that consistency and that the shorter terms will be more from those of us that kind of represent more certain parts of this, you know, of the segment of our city and they'll be shorter because you want more diversity coming on more often or. So I think David did a good job of um, kind of addressing that a little bit earlier. So what we focused on was really um, not necessarily expertise in a certain field, but how much interest, so there were kind of two factors, how much um, interest we got in kind of different positions or different representations when we um, asked for applications and then kind of how difficult it was to fill that position. So for, for the, the position represented driving, the, we had two people leave over the summer and so that one's been a little bit more challenging. And so it's really kind of trying to focus on what would be more difficult to fill given a certain, you know, given a, given a certain timeline. So um, potentially for those um, positions that, right. um, yeah, would be easier to fill, they'd be a shorter timeline, if that makes sense. Thank you. So the, okay, so the next thing that we had on the agenda was um, commission communication. If anybody wanted to go through and share anything I guess um, you can let me know by, you know, raising your hand. Okay, I don't see anybody. Okay. And then the, um, the last thing that we had for tonight was just staff communication. So really the only thing I kind of wanted to share with you for tonight was what I shared just a little bit ago and that what Loretta talked about as well as the TSP. So I would encourage you to go to the Be Heard um, Vancouver website. And so the, we actually, um, which is a little unusual for the city, we did a, a branding and a name and a logo for the transportation system plan. So it's called Vancouver Moves. So that's what we're using um, in our public outreach. So it's the Vancouver Moves um, web section within the Be Heard uh, page. So if you're interested in looking at that, uh, please go ahead and go there. And then I'll be sending out more information on that. But that was really the primary update. And then also was going to let you know that we should know about term limits, like Rebecca said, within the next, um, before the next meeting. I have a question. Sure. The question is what Marjorie suggested to us when she um, talked about her role as the chair for the Planning Commission and um, actually going out and looking at these different project site areas. I'm relatively new to Vancouver. I know the city, but I'm not that well versed in locations and things. So are you kind of encouraging us to familiarize ourselves with some of those areas for those of us that are newer to Vancouver? Yes, if, if possible, I think it would be really valuable for commission members when we come to you with different projects. So like Westside Mike Mobility Project or the McLaughlin Project or the Fourth Plain Project. If you're unfamiliar with those, it definitely I think is really valuable to go out and do a, you know, walk the corridor, bike the corridor, drive the corridor. Um, if there's transit, you know, use transit along the corridor just to get a better understanding of how it functions and, you know, even if possible, go different um, times of the day because some streets can look very different depending on the, the time of day. So yeah, that would be great. I wouldn't, um, right now we don't, we don't have a good list of kind of projects to, to give you to do that with yet, but you're more than welcome to go out and do some initial site visits if you want to, but 
yeah, within in the future, I think that would be really helpful for members. Just looking, just looking at the agenda you gave us for the coming year, I think um, that's a for me that's a good starting point just to yeah. look at those particular projects. So thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments before we adjourn for tonight? Okay, well, again, um, can't say it enough. Thank you for your patience uh, with our technical difficulties that we had. Um, don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions. And um, I hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving holiday and, and stays safe um, during this time. And then we'll um, adjourn for tonight and come back on the 1st of December. See you then. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you, good night. Good night. Thank Good night. You. Good night. Thanks all. Have a good one.